Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg here in Las Vegas. Hank, we got a big week of sports. We got hockey this week. We got the WNBA finals. We've got the baseball playoffs. We had a big, uh, big game last night with uh, Milwaukee taking off with a three-run lead, and it took uh, right down to the end of the game, and Washington came back. Well, uh, you know the starting pitcher for. Uh Washington settled down after the, after he gave up the three runs and really carried him into the late innings. I thought that was important. And uh, then you got the young guy uh, who was, uh, you know, a 20-year-old kid who delivered the key hit. And then there was, uh, they really missed uh, Braun uh, in the outfield because the uh, guy who would play 40 games all year in right field made the critical error that allowed the three runs to come in uh, on that base hit in the eighth inning, and that was uh, that was a ball game. That was the key. One one error, one mistake, and that's something. And then you got to live with that the rest of your life, which is a bitch and to have to do that. That's too bad. Um, we got a big. Do you think they'll be talking about him like they talk about Buckner in Boston? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. That and that he never lived that down. It was terrible. Um. The fans can be brutal. Yeah. Well, we got uh, we got another game today. We've got the um, Oakland hosting Tampa Bay in the wild card game, and then of course we move on to the other, you know, playoff games. The big guys: St. Louis, Atlanta, Washington. It will be at the Dodgers, Minnesota at the Yankees. It's going to be a pretty exciting uh, couple of weeks. I'm not crazy about St. Louis. They they blew a lot of games late, uh, late innings uh, that uh, they could have won uh, throughout the last month or so. <clears throat> Atlanta's a hot team right now. Yeah, except for Flattery. Then St. Louis, that kid, that Flattery's been amazing for St. Louis. But other than that, uh, yeah, you're right. And uh, we got football. We got a big weekend of football. We got some. Uh, Teams looking to bounce back off losses. We got Thursday night game. We got the Rams against Seattle. Rams gave up a ton of points. Nobody expected that. And Seattle uh, bounced back after a loss to the Saints, and they beat the well, the not so good Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Rams uh, also scored a lot of points in that game. Uh, and it was the interceptions that killed him. Uh, and if uh, he settles down a little bit, uh, they've got a shot. That's an interesting game to see if the Rams can bounce back. But, uh, you know, they were, <laughs> I mean, who expected, you know, that many points to be scored in that game because the Rams' defense uh, really fell apart. <clears throat> but the turnovers really put their defense in a hole. So... Yeah. I think Goff will, uh, will come back against uh, Seattle's defense. and uh, But that'll be a good game. Uh, there are a lot of two-and-two two teams right now uh, in the NFL. Um, and uh, which two-and-two two team is going to go on and which one is not, that's, that's going to be it. Baltimore is uh, going to Pittsburgh, big rivalry game there. Uh, Raiders go to uh, England to face... Chicago and uh, see uh, what uh, Oakland has already lost to them a couple of times, uh, and I think their record is is uh, I made a note somewhere that their record against Chicago was pretty poor, and uh, I think it was something like one in six. I make it one in seven when you count the trade. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, Khalil, Khalil Mack says he's been looking forward to this game for a long time. I pity Oakland in this game. They're coming <laughs> off a big win, but uh, this is uh, this could be tough. Uh, Chicago's got, you know, Chase, a quarterback now. I think that's an upgrade. It is. But, uh, you know, Green Bay-Dallas is a game that interests me. Green Bay has beaten them three times down there. 
And each time they uh, they had, uh, you know, I think a 60-yard field goal in one of them. Uh, the went looked like it was going one way and then faded to go through the other way. They had a, bad, a questionable call in another game down there. They've had some tough breaks. But I'll tell you something about that game, the way it shapes up going in. Um, Green Bay defensively has given up an average of 150 yards rushing per game its last three games. They have no run defense whatsoever. And now they're going to face Ezekiel and the Dallas running game. That's a big negative for Green Bay. Uh, the other is that it looks like their top receiver – who, uh, ran, who caught 180 yards worth of passes last week, uh, has got a turf toe, and it doesn't look like he's been downgraded to doubtful. And without him, uh, that really severely hurt Green Bay's passing game. Uh, so I don't know what that number is going to be. It's been holding around uh, three and a half or four points. So It's, it's, uh, three, uh, and that a, may it's, go. it's three and a half right now, the total 46 and a half or 47. Yeah, so I think Dallas has, uh, you know, they'll be looking for uh, revenge for the previous home games that they lost, a couple of them by flukes. And, uh, you know, last week they ran up against us, you know, a real tough pass rush and a great defense in New Orleans. Uh, I'm also anxious to see what New Orleans does against Tampa Bay. Uh, Arian seems to have turned... Uh, the quarterback around, he's had two good games in a row. Now he goes against the New Orleans defense. Uh, so I'm anxious to see that game, too. There's some real good matchups this week that I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Uh, Jacksonville at Carolina, the young quarterback for Carolina, who's 3-0 and right now, uh, going against that defense. And... Uh, and, it, and is uh, the Minishu uh, magic going to last uh, against Carolina's defense on the road? Another road game for Jacksonville this week. So there's some real good matchups in the NFL. This is a good week. Denver at the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers get uh, their running back uh, Gordon. in the lineup this, this week. Yeah, and Denver, Denver is just lousy. They, 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 they're poorly coached, amazingly so, even on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, they haven't been able to produce anything in their 0-4. Uh, there's going to be, I think, some drastic changes in that organization. Washington has to play New England. <laughs> uh, Washington, Washington may be uh, worse than the uh, previous opponents, except for Miami, that New England has played this year. Yeah, it's another 0 and 14. Denver, Denver, and uh, the good thing for Miami this week is they don't have to play. They're on a yeah, they can't lose. <laughs> they can't lose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and then the Monday night game, Cleveland and San Francisco. That's going to be a good game. Yeah, I think it's a terrific game. Uh, you know, we'll find out about Cleveland now. Now everybody's back on the Cleveland bandwagon again uh, because of the way they won last week. Now they have to travel to the West Coast to play San Francisco, a very good San Francisco team. Let me ask you a question, uh, Hank. You've been what do you, what do you think of this Baltimore team? I mean, I know they they won the the first game against Miami, fifty nine to ten. But other than that, have you been impressed with them? Uh, no, uh, I have. I've, I've been. Uh, I, I've been. An, I was anxious to see what uh, Jackson would do against better competition. And he's lived down to my expectations. <laughs> you know, he, he lay, you know, last week he threw a couple of bad picks and uh, did not have a good game. Uh, but now they go up against a Pittsburgh team that you know had a good game against a very bad Cincinnati team. And I don't know if uh, Pittsburgh's defense can hold up another week. Uh, they played, you know, this is not Cincinnati. Baltimore's better than that. Uh, but, you know, Baltimore, uh, has, uh, well, this was, that was a ball, a different Baltimore team that, uh, had the uh, rivalry with the Steelers, but has never played well at Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I think I made a note 
about uh, the, the records. Um, Baltimore's record at Pittsburgh is something like three, three and one in the last five years. And uh, one of the games that they won there, uh, they won by three by a field goal. Uh, the other two they lost fairly convincingly. Uh, Pittsburgh beat them pretty good. So, uh, yeah. and in the recency, uh, Pittsburgh has had their number, but that was a different Pittsburgh team. That was with fat face. <laughs> you got Mason Rudolph, who had a. Decent little game last week in Cincinnati. But oh, I thought he had a great game. Well, that's That was a... my best bet of the week, and he didn't let me down. He was 24 for 28. Well, and uh, they, they had a great game plan for him. And a lot of, I know a lot of the completions were to backs, but you know what? When he had to go deep, he came through. He threw one long ball. It was a beautifully uh, thrown pass. He didn't do anything wrong. The reason I said decent was because... It's hard to give you an A grade when you go up against Cincinnati. Some of these bad teams are bad, but I I like the way he played. But his his most of his passes were short. He was accurate. He looked good, and there was a lot of enthusiasm in the ballpark. The Steelers were really happy. You know what? The, the game, the ball came out quick. I like that. He uh, read his open receivers. I like that. He didn't make any mistakes. No turnovers, and uh, he. Uh, they had a real good game plan for him, and uh, they read what his strengths were, and they set up the defense when he had to throw the long ball. He was right on target. He threw a beautiful deep pass uh, later on in the game, and he, yeah, I thought he played very well. Yeah, well, he he, he did. He did. Now he's going to play up against a, a tougher defense this week. It's really it's just kind of like we're looking tougher, at a tougher defense with with a bad secondary. True, and we got Lamar Jackson against Mason Rudolph. And for me, if I was going forward with one quarterback, it would not be with Jackson. I have not been impressed with Jackson's performance. I know he threw five touchdowns against Miami, but that's Miami. Yeah, you could throw five touchdowns against Miami. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to try that. <laughs> I'd probably get killed. Oh, they're they're awful. <laughs> they have the worst defense in uh, probably in the history of the game. Wow. Yeah, they're the lowest rated team. Most of the power ratings out there show Miami to be the lowest rated team in in the in decades decades. So it's it's pretty bad, but. Um, the co- There's a lot of coaches on the hot seat right now, um, Hank, and Dan Quinn is one, and you got O'Brien is always mentioned, and then of course you got the um, you, you got the guy in Washington, Jay Gruden. What do you think about all that? Uh, who's going to go for it first? I, I, I think Jay Gruden is going to wind up with his brother in Oakland, uh, and that could come soon. I think and, Jay, um, I think Jay Gruden would celebrate if he got fired. It, it's a mess there. Yeah, and uh, I don't think he's a. I think he's a pretty good football guy, uh, and I'm fairly certain he'll wind, wind, he'll be in Las Vegas next year on the Raiders staff. Oh, um, that's interesting. In fact, I've heard that's what's going to happen. So uh, you've got that going on with him. Uh, I think you have. Um, the uh, Houston, there were high expectations for Houston. Uh, they uh, really failed last week. It was a poorly coached game. Uh, and um, who was the third one you mentioned? Well, Gruden, uh, Dan Quinn, and Bill O'Brien. Oh yeah, which, and they're facing uh, they're facing Atlanta each other. Is a, is Atlanta right now? Uh, you know. Um, Ryan is in total decline. He's just throwing one one pick after another. There's uh, the defense is a mess. Uh, you know they brought in the guy from Tampa to coach the offense, and so far that hasn't worked. Uh, and they're, I mean, they're just playing lousy football right now. And on the road, uh, the record is abysmal. It's something like three and three and ten. And uh, they've been a bad this road week, team. Uh, Pardon me? They've been a bad road team. Yeah. yeah. 
and they're bad in the red zone. And uh, this week they go into Houston. So, uh, and Houston's a five-point favorite. Uh, but the Atlanta is just, you know, a terrible risk. Their, sec- their defense is non-existent. Now, that, there has to be a reason. I know they've had a lot of injuries, uh, but, you know, it, the, the coach is supposed to be a defensive specialist, and they stink. Yeah, Dan Quinn is, is a defensive specialist, but they get, they're they totally out of position. I was watching some of the tape, and they they just don't uh, – that team has fallen apart. And, and Ryan – his stats look bad. You know, he builds up a lot of uh, garbage time stats, but they're always behind. They're down 14, 21 points before they ever get going. That's, yeah, well, we pointed this out three weeks ago. <laughs> so, right. Welcome to the party. <laughs> right. Well, Hank, uh, it's going to be a good week. Uh, good luck with the baseball and football. We'll talk again on Friday. Okay. Thanks, Hank. And don't forget, when you go to the website, jimfeist.com, you can uh, pick up free plays each and every day. Just register, and we'll send you the plays each and every day. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the podcast.